All right, in this episode of Tequila with Tone, we've got Cascanes. It is a Reposado, and it's one of three different from this distillery, or brand, rather, something like that. Anyway, let's check it out. Okay, so Caz Cane. So this uh, Reposado is a tequila from a brand that's a little bit interesting. Uh, they claim to have a 300 year old recipe. Super cool, right? In theory, anyway, we hope. Uh, they also have multiple different, um, I don't know how you say, it, versions of like Reposado and Anejo and what is it, Planta, Block, Blanco, something, anyway. So they have different versions and they actually are different ABVs. So this one we have today is their Reposado number seven, which is a 40, which is typical. They also have a number nine, which is 50, and they have a number 10, which is 54. So if you want a stronger tequila, I guess, you know, you can pick your poison. Uh, I'll have to look into that a little bit more and see more about it, but uh, the brand overall has about 11 different bottles that they produce, which is crazy. Uh, I'm, again, it's, it probably all has to do with a lot of that ABV variants, but we'll get into them. Like I said, the mission is to try them all, so we'll get to them at some point. Uh, the other interesting thing is this comes from a distillery that doesn't have a ton of different brands. So if you think about some of the ones we've reviewed before, like the Fletcher Azul, you know, that came from a distillery that also had Adictivo and several others, you know, some of these distilleries produce 50, 60, 70 different brands. Uh, this one in particular only has about six different brands that, it, that are produced from this distillery. So that's kind of, I think that might be a good thing, but I don't really know for sure. It's something I'm probably gonna look into in the future. So all that said, let's go ahead and get into what this actually tastes like. In order to do that, I gotta get it open, which sometimes I'm bad at. And this time, success! Woo! Winner! So we got a nice little cute braid of like twine on here. It's kind of cool looking. All their bottles are pretty much the same like you see here. Nothing particularly special there. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and see what it tastes like. <sighs> Gotta love that sound. Got a fresh glass here. Okay. Some of the alcohol burn off of there. I know that's one of the things that, you know, as I do these reviews, I gotta learn, you know, I gotta get better at this. So, you know, sometimes the alcohol just has to burn off, just to give it time, let it go away, and then you can get more aromas. Oh yeah, yeah. So that definitely has a, I must call it a mild toasted um, agave flavor to it, or aroma. Um, Otherwise, you know, maybe a little bit of fruit, citrusy type, uh, something going on there. But uh, nothing really stand out. It's, it's, I don't want to call, I hate to say bland, um, but it, it, it really, it almost could be described as bland it, it, from an aroma perspective. Yeah, but it, it does give me, at least from the smell, it gives me a hint that it might be pretty smooth. So let's go ahead and find out. Oh, oh, ooh, oh, that's interesting. Okay, so let me start putting some words together. So, it, you'd be, uh, you wouldn't be remiss to, to mistake the initial burn for alcohol. I think it's actually spice. It's like pepper, um, you know, uh, maybe like a serrano or jalapeno level of spice that hits your tongue, almost like your entire first half of your tongue, if you think from, from mid mouth forward. And it, it almost has like, a, like you ate something, like you ate something spicy. Um, and it's great because it almost, um, it has a, a, a good amount of burn, but nothing bad. You know, I don't want to put you off by that, but but the spice in like a spicy note with the burn from the alcohol is like this perfect balance. It's, it's really incredible. Mm. 
Yeah, and there's a little bit of oakiness in there. Um, definitely not that vanilla like we've had in some previous bottles I've reviewed recently. But wow, that's really good in a, in, a, in a way that I would not have expected. I'll put it that way. So there's tequilas that have like a really good agave flavor and really low burn from the alcohol and they just taste good because you love tequila. This one is more good because it has that spice, that oakiness, um, almost, I would call it mature kind of flavor to it. And it has a proper amount of alcohol burn if you're thinking about you know, drinking a 40% spirit. I'm very curious now to try the more, uh, the, the uh, nine and the 10, which are supposed to be a higher ABV, because if they properly blended that with this spice, Man, those could be really amazing as well. So I would call this a get some because I think if you wanted to have a reposado on your bar or in your house that you could share with folks and have them experience something different about tequila than what they're used to in terms of just doing tequila shots at the bar, this would be a great candidate for that. Now, on the downside, it's a little pricey. Uh, I think it comes in at um, producer B. 145, 135, 130. <laughs> I wasn't reading the hand signals. Okay, so it comes in around 135, so it's a little on the pricier side, uh, but if you're in the position to swing it and get some, I would say do so, because I don't think you'll be disappointed. And it's the bottle that it won't disappear off your bar right away, because you're gonna drink it all the time, but it's a great one to share with folks, and it's a great one you could almost sip on it, which is very rare for a Reposado. Uh, typically, if you're going to sip, you're looking at those extra nejos. So, yeah, it's a get some. Uh, Casa Cans, Reposado number seven. If you like what you're seeing here and you're enjoying the content, then go ahead and give me a subscribe, give me a thumbs up, give me a comment, do all those YouTube things to help me out. I appreciate it, and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.